Did I mention the infestation of, of squirrels? I didn't? Okay, well, <clears throat> in a small town uh, not far from here, a band of squirrels had become quite a problem. The Presbyterian Church called a meeting to decide what to do about their infestation. After much prayer and consideration, they concluded that the squirrels were predestined to be there and they shouldn't interfere with God's divine will. So they just dropped the case. At the Baptist church, and this was just at churches, at the Baptist church, the squirrels had taken an interest in the baptistry. So the deacons met and they decided to put a water slide on the baptistry and let the squirrels drown themselves. Uh, the squirrels, <coughs> they liked the slide and unfortunately knew instinctively how to swim. So twice as many squirrels showed up the following week. The Lutheran church decided that they were not in a position to harm any of God's creatures. So they humanely trapped the squirrels and set them free near the Baptist church. <laughs> Two weeks later, the squirrels were back when the Baptists took down the water slide. <clears throat> the Episcopalians tried a much more unique path by setting out pans of whiskey around the church in an effort to kill the squirrels with alcohol poisoning. They sadly learned how much damage a band of drunken squirrels can do. But the Catholic Church came up with a more uh, very creative st uh, strategy. They baptized all the squirrels and made them members of the church. Now they only see them on Christmas and Easter. And not much was heard from the Jewish synagogue. They took the first squirrel and circumcised him. They haven't seen any squirrels since. So that's what's going on in small town somewhere. Yeah. And this is Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. That's us. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from the trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you, God says, in the way that you should go, I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by a bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you are of upright heart. That is Psalm 32. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Amen. Amen. Lord, we're grateful for your promises, and today we celebrate those promises in word, in scripture, and in song. Be glorified in all that we say and do, Lord God. And we pray this prayer once again that you taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain Free to all the healing stream Flows from Calvary's mountain And in the cross, in the cross Be my glory ever Until my raptured soul might find Rest beyond the river and near the cross a trembling soul love and mercy found me there the bright and morning star shed its beams around me and in the cross in the cross be my glory ever until my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross O Lamb of God bring its scenes before me Help me walk from day to day With its shadow over me And in the cross, in the cross Be my glory ever Until my raptured soul shall find Rest beyond the rain Near the cross I'll watch and wait Hoping, trusting ever Until I reach that golden strand Just beyond the river And in the cross, in the cross Be my glory Until my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Until my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Today, Lord, we thank you for the cross. A horrible, difficult, unsavory event that is the glory, the glory, the glory that we live for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for putting us first so that we might learn to put you first. We celebrate you in song today, Lord God, with these things. Amen. My buddy Dana Periard wrote this. One by one, my sins were laid on him. And it carried all my burdens to the cross now I have a peace I never earned he bought my freedom at such a painful cost and all the stripes laid on him oh they have made me whole again he took my shame and made my heart so free 
He took my sickness and my sin. Oh, he opened up his royal hands and carried them away forevermore. One by one, our knees go down to him. As we offer up the sorrows of our hearts And one by one he reaches out to us And we receive the treasure his precious blood has bought And all the stripes laid on him oh they have made me whole again he took my shame and made my heart so free he took my sickness and my sin oh he opened up his royal hands and carried them away He died for us And he rose for us And if we die with him Then we'll live with him Forevermore Forevermore And all the stripes laid on him oh they have made me whole again he took my shame and made my life so free he took my sickness and my sin oh he opened up his royal hands and carried them away Evermore. Would you pray, Alton? Thank you, Alton. Our hearts also go out to those who have had a devastating loss, losses of life, losses of pets, uh, losses of a loss of a community in, uh, in Hawaii. So, Lord, we, we think of them now and pray. And uh, I know that you are on it, Lord. You're on the case, and, and you're there in great, uh, great presence. And... Those who love you have already contributed to the effort, Lord, have been contributing. And we remember them, Lord, and we thank you that you remember them as well. And show us how we might bless them, Lord God, in ways that uh, would reach them quite personally. And we thank you for that precious Jesus. Amen.
breathe life into these dry and thirsty souls. Lord, hear our prayer. Forgive our sins As we call on your name Would you make this a place For your glory to dwell Open the blind eyes Unlock the deaf ears Come to your people As we draw near Hear us from heaven Touch our generation We are your people Crying out in desperation Lord, hear our song Your children worship you As we sing out your praise Would you make this a place For your glory to dwell Open the blind eyes Open the deaf ears Come to your people As we draw near us from heaven touch our generation we are your people crying out in desperation the blind eyes unlock the deaf ears come to your people as we draw near who hear us from heaven Touch our generation We are your people Crying out in desperation Hear us from heaven Hear us from heaven Hear us from heaven. Lord, forgive us when we grow impatient, when we don't see a resolution for our prayer right away, Lord. Forgive us when we forget to ask. Forgive us when we just think that you're too far away, Lord. Everything that you've said and done in, in the world and in our lives personally, testifies to your goodness, your greatness, and your closeness. Lord, we'll celebrate that today in Scripture. We thank you for these things, precious Jesus. Be glorified. We love you, Lord. We thank you. Amen. 1 Kings 19.9 At Horeb, the mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of the hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. Probably a great big fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the Fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, 
What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant. They've thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. And then the Lord said, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel-Maholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Haziel, Jehu shall kill. Whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. Elijah is empty. Been there? Anyone who cares about outcomes contributing to an effort worth sustaining, and you all have, can easily understand Elijah's angst. He has dashed a handful of demonically inspired pseudo-prophets of Baal slew them, 450 of them, hand to hand, ridded the earth of them. I cannot believe it's all in a day's work for anyone to kill such a mob and just walk away and get a cozy nap, write a letter home. Certainly not a holy man. Now in the wake of this and having been threatened by Jezebel that she would hunt him down and kill him like a dog. And considering the torment and the taunts of the evil spirits as the devil's demons were vanquished from the godless false prophets, Elijah is in a funk, exhausted, processing the day's rigors. And he must feel like it wasn't enough to sustain and advance God's righteous plan for Israel. He believes that he is alone in the ongoing battle with evil. He says as much. What if you were the only Christian left in the known world? Think about it. Feel up to it? I don't. How could the God of creation expect him to stand against the fallen world alone? And how had he somehow failed, come up lacking? Those are common thoughts, aren't they? Exhaustion impales our best efforts at reasoning when we sense failure. We forget, I'm a servant to the Lord. He owns the outcome. Elijah got a refresher course at the very place where Moses heard from God with earthquake, wind, fire. God says, go up and out and stand on this mountain. The Lord is about to pass by. God drives, drove Elijah and you and me and does you and me to holy introspection That's just how he rolls when he asks, what are you doing here, Elijah? God knows everything. And when he asks you a question, we've talked about this before, it's to get you to reflect and consider the truth of of why you're doing something or why you're thinking something or why you're feeling something. He knows, but he wants you to come out of your bounty with understanding. And in contrast to gale force, wind, earthquake, and raging fire, God God brings stillness, peace, quiet, safety, and good news. God is present in the stillness. He says, you're not alone. I'm still working a perfect plan. We've got this. You've not failed. He says that to us. I'm with you. Maybe you know someone who's never struggled in life. 
I'd like to meet them. Those who hate the Lord are in endless turmoil, those I've met. And we who love the Lord live in the same fallen world, but we, di- we drink from a different cup of living water and salvation. One takeaway is this. At our lowest point, God isn't finished with us. The evidence is that we're here. <laughs> the evidence to me is that I'm here. He is able, present, and near. And he remembers that we are formed from dust. Vulnerable, but capable. Tired, but triumphant. Weary, but battle-tested. Can't touch this. The second reading today is from Romans. Wonderful, wonderful reading as well. Paul tells the people of Rome, Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them, the law, the legalism of of Judaism. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. Remember, God promised he would write his his word on our hearts. The word of faith that we proclaim because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, set apart. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can't make it any easier than that, can you? But how are, how are they to call on the one to whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? That's where we come in. And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. I'm a Christian. How hard is that to say? Some people don't want to hear it from us, do you? We are calling cards for the Lord, representatives of him in this life. And we're all perfect evidence that God's grace prevails. We're a new creation, amen? Oh, let me hear it loud, amen? Amen. You are brand spanking new. We're a new creation, try hiding that, blame Jesus. I like how Zach Williams explains it to his friends. The Bible by the beds ain't a coaster no more. It's still got some rings from the bottle before. But the red letter mercy put an end to my thirsty. The Bible by the bed ain't a coaster no more. Well, I told the old man that I loved him today, and he said it back before he drove away. Being stubborn like my father, we're all, we're, we were oil and water. But I told my old man that I loved him today. I guess that's what happens when he chases you down. Everything's different. There's a new me in town. I don't wake up angry at the mirror on the wall. If you miss the old me, well, that's Jesus' fault. Blame him. Talk to him about it. The gospel reading for today. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And While he dismissed the crowds and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came and he was there alone, but by this, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was so far from land for the wind against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, don't be afraid. 
Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. But Jesus, and Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why do you doubt? There's a question. When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Lord, we thank you for this gospel, for your preservation of the word. Let us live this out in our lives. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Typical day, disciples are just doing what they were told to do, working for the Lord. No sooner do they launch out on the water than they are besieged by wild wind blown sea billows. There was actually, there was a, a carve out between the mountains and the wind would blow on that and, and it would hit those mountains and it would accelerate in speed and blow across the water in that place. So it was quite turbulent. Takeaway, none of us gets a pass. They were earning their stripes, learning to trust, and that didn't happen overnight. Not for them, not for me, not for you. But God could not coddle them. We must never envy or judge a person who has had it too easy. We're the fortunate ones those of us who have storms in our lives, but have the Lord. Those who've had it easy, their struggles are greater and more for pervasive than ours. You notice that? The people that don't have the Lord, that have just had everything going for them, and, well, we don't always see their struggles. Okay, you can roll your eyes at their opinions, but with love. But we don't judge them. Bless their little hearts. Another takeaway, Jesus didn't jump into action to coddle them in. In due time, he showed up. He hasn't healed Amy's vertebrae. Hasn't completely grown up the children that we adore. It doesn't mean he's unavailable or disinterested. Our Judy had, had to have heart surgery this week. She's doing pretty good now. Our friend Sue from Walmart, she's suffering a cancer that is a bad one. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change. James 1.17, that's a good one to memorize. You could say every good and perfected gift, perfected in God's hands prior to being given. That is perfectly timed, perfected gift, then given. And that's what we can count on. I pray for immediate healings. And I do so wanting them badly. But, and immediate results. But I know that in God's timing, he's going to answer that. Other takeaways. The obvious, expect calamity when we face when we take our eyes off of Jesus, Peter began to sink. And Jesus, of course, came to his help. And the third takeaway, God commands the elements. Nature is still under his ultimate command, and he intervenes on behalf of those who love him. If the world is warming up, God is watching. Amen. If it's cooling down, God's watching. Pray with me. We're grateful today, Lord, for your closeness, for the promises that we might sometimes forget, and for your word going out to those who will see this, who are not able to be here or who live elsewhere, far away even, that you are close by to those who love you with with a just love you with a need and an aspiration, an aspiration, an intention to know you more. 
It doesn't require more than that. You are near. So bless us in these things, Lord God, in these understandings, and bless those who we adore and love who are struggling, struggling, Lord God. Help them get on top of that struggle emotionally, mentally, physically. But help them to look to you, we ask. Help them look to you and get the real answer from you. We're grateful to be called to your service, Lord God, and I thank you for clarifying that to each of us who would look to you and say, oh, what are we doing today, Lord? Bless my friends here and bless our time together, those who can stay in fellowship. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. I want to give you an example of the widow's might. Last week, if you weren't here, one of the, one of the trays was, was uh, full of pennies from, from this little rich girl. Yeah, she's rich in love, and uh, she's rich in understanding that if we have more than what we need, we give. So... I don't want to embarrass you, but I wanted to point that out. Can you, I hope you can see her. Okay? God bless you, Reagan. Her name's Reagan, by the way, a really good name in this world. Well, there's pie downstairs and donut holes for Reagan, so, or you can probably have some of them if she says so. Lord bless you, friends. Let's go downstairs. Oh, you want to say something? Everyone can have a donut. Everyone can have a donut, she says. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, baby. <laughs>